Well, good morning and happy new year. Welcome to the Meeting House on this Sunday morning. My name is Chris. I'm one of our pastors here, and it's so great to be your live stream host this morning. For those of you who are normal, regular attendees on our online uh, community, or whether you're visiting in uh, because we've had all of our church join us online today. And if you're worried about whether or not we're going online for a long period of time, don't worry. Most of our spaces are going to be back in person next week. But so great for those of you who are visiting with us online that you get to be hanging out with us um, as we were doing almost two years ago. And maybe right now, I would invite you to Go back on YouTube in our chat for a couple of seconds and let people know where you're watching from. Or maybe you're doing this on our Discord server. Just say hello to people. Do some welcomes. Let people know how your Christmas has been going. It's been so great to be able to look back at the year. And that's what we're going to be doing this morning. I have four stools and in a little while, we're going to be inviting four friends of mine to talk a little bit about 2022, the year that was. And then we're going to look at 2023. We're going to talk about what we're hoping for, what we're praying for, for the year that is to come. I wonder, maybe you can put this in the chat. What are you hoping for, for the year? What are some prayers you have? How would you describe your 2022? Maybe right now, that's something you can put in our YouTube chat or put in our, our Discord server. One of the things that is exciting about us as a church is we get to do things together. We, we sing together, we learn together, and we, we give together as well. Giving is a part of our, our worship. It's a part of our expression of faith. It's a part of who we are as a community. And as we give, we're able to then do even greater things for, for the kingdom. So we thank you for your willingness to, to give and to partner with us as we look forward to seeing how that partnership grows into the new year. I've talked a lot, haven't I? People accuse me of that all the time. Why don't we, we sing a little bit? And so we're turning it over to my friend, Rachel, who's going to be leading us in some songs of worship. Well, good morning, everyone. We're excited to be together this morning. We want to give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Yes, he is good. Psalm 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. And we are the redeemed of the Lord. So let us today tell our story of God's goodness. For we cried to the Lord in our times of trouble, and he heard us. He saved us from our distress. He brought us out, out of darkness, utter darkness, and he's broken the chains that have tended to bind us. So we have a story to tell of God's goodness. I'm sure you remember Miriam when the people of Israel came through the waters on dry land. She grabbed the tambourine, I, well, I think it was a tambourine, something like this. And she called the women and the men and everyone in the congregation to worship. And they lifted their voices, and these are the words that she said. She led them with this, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. And that was their story of God's faithfulness, God's goodness to destroy those things that threatened them and that were uh, hindering them from worshiping him. So this morning, let's stand to our feet and let's tell our story in song and in worship and in dance and in flagging and whatever uh, comes to your heart and mind. Let's tell our story together. Excuse me for a minute. I've got a song to sing. from my heart and no one else can tell it what the Lord has done for me and this might take all day so I better start right now it might get loud it might get loud heaven's coming down have a halo. No, I'm not a perfect man. I'm just glad to be a child of God. Where I think or where I could have been, should have been, would have been if you had stepped in. I've got a praise on the inside that can't be
fun. Seven twenty-four to 27 says anyone who listens to my teaching and follow is wise like a person who builds a house on a solid rock though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand when the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house it will collapse with a mighty crash so as we sing this next part, let's ask God to give us the faith we need to believe that he is our mighty rock. While we are fixed on him, we will not collapse. Even when we face hard things, even when we don't understand, even when we are shaken, even in our doubt, even through our tears and our trials, we stand firm 
on his foundation and he is faithful. good reminder that we're not alone. And we are back, and we are going to have a fun panel-type discussion. I have four friends here with me. I got Haley, I got Matt, I got Lisa, I got Tammy. And we're going to talk about the year that was, and we're going to talk a little bit about the year that is to come. Because, as you know, today is New Year's Day. We're filming this in advance, but they (laughs) think it's New Year's Day right now. Got (laughs) it. Wink. So, question for you guys. To just to kind of stargate the ball rolling, mm-hmm. what are you? What in your mind would you think is the a pop culture moment that took place mm-hmm. over 2022 that stood out to you? Like for me, quite easily, it's the return of the Croc. Crocs. <laughs> oh, terrible. Crocs <laughs> changed the world one shoe at a time. Or as my brother-in-law said, they were never cool. Well, maybe <laughs> you, brother-in-law, I and I, I need to have a conversation. <laughs> Divisive already. <laughs> <laughs> The last year we were, not this year, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, like, but in all honesty, like, what were some things that took place pop culture wise in, in the stratosphere of the world that stood out to you over the course of, of the year? Matt, can I start with you? Is that okay? Yeah. Well, Canada made the World Cup. We did. It's memorable. Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. We transitioned out of the monarchy. Yes. The queen, the <laughs> queen mm. has, has left us. God's and, the king. you know, whatever you think about the monarchy, that's mm-hmm. kind of an interesting moment to just mark a milestone 
in in culture. And I think on a, an even All more our lifetimes. S- that's yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. right? Yeah. Like our life. For most people who are alive, yeah. they only remember the queen. Um, mm-hmm. And I think on a more serious note too, it's hard to look at this year and not. And to, it's not. It's hard to look at this year and not acknowledge what's happened in the war in Ukraine mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we continue to process that, but that's left a mark on all of us. And I've had the privilege of interacting with refugees from Ukraine and seeing what that's mm-hmm. done to families and people. Um, yeah, so that was, that's one that's on my heart as well. Lisa, Tammy, Haley, one of three of you. Something? I mean, I can shift gears completely. Ben and JLo got back together and got <laughs> married. <laughs> So that's a major yes. jump from the war in Ukraine yeah. <laughs> to a marriage that just like made everyone happy. But I mean, it happened. From from things falling apart to things coming together. I exactly. love it. Exactly. Exactly. We're, we're bookending exactly. things here. We're yeah, bookending there you go. Here. <laughs> Ladies, what about you? Uh, listen, I had to Google pop culture. <laughs> That's my world. I was like, I don't know. Like, unless I hear about it around the lunch table, yep. it doesn't really affect my world. So I respect that. Yeah. So what we've learned today is that Google <laughs> in and of itself is a pop culture moment for Tammy. There, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. And Lisa, what about you? you you're closing this, co- this conversation out. Well, and admittedly, too, I was like, this year's been long, like mm-hmm. because there's been That's large fair. things that have happened like geopolitically. But I was like, in terms of like celebrities, I was like, who had passed away this year? That was stuff I looked at. And so, like, sh- I actually forgot the queen passed away until I was going through them, which I was like, how did I, my brain forget that point? But I remember the jokes at the start of this year that Betty White had just, like, mm-hmm. peaced out and was like, I'm not going to do 2022 because she died the day before, <laughs> yeah. died on New Year's Eve yeah. 2021. And But she was this, like, legend of film yep. mm-hmm. and humorous mm-hmm. and... So I don't know if, if that was like a harbinger. I remember at the time, this can be a harbinger of bad things. And, you know, there was and has been a lot of hard stuff this year. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact that she is a humorous and a lighthearted person helps give me like still like perspective and joy and hope and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. So in, in, light of, in light of that, if you were going to put 2022 into a sentence, into a, a phrase, not a paragraph, <laughs> <laughs> that's my department, the overtalker. But if you were going to put 2022 into a sentence, what would that sentence be? I got one. Go for I've it. I've been thinking about it. It's been beautifully challenging. Mm. So not mm. necessarily a sentence, but it's been beautifully challenging. So I'll yeah, mine, that. mine builds on that too. I would have taken a more personal angle on it and said, Encountering Jesus in the unexpected mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and realizing that that's where he lives is in pain and suffering mm-hmm. um, and seeing the transformation he brings about precisely in those moments. I think encountering Jesus in the unexpected would be one for me. Mm. It's been a year that Jesus has reminded me what's important in my life. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say, um, it feels like living out Psalm 23, wow. walking through the valley mm-hmm. of the shadow yeah. of death, but there's still that hope, their comfort. He's never left me. He's led me beside streams, but that's what this year has kind of felt like. Mm-hmm. This idea of like walking in the shadow, the, the unknown. That's what 2022 has been like, if I was going to describe it, it's like a year of the unknown, mm-hmm. legitimately walking from one day to the next going like, I don't know what this, this day, this month, or even your year womp, 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 <laughs> is going to feel or, or be like. Um, but trusting that God is there in in the midst of it has it's just been um, I don't know if they're going to write history books about 2022 when it's all said and done, but it's been a really historic time over these these last 365 days. Mm-hmm. Now, Haley, yes, um, a year ago today, yeah. not today really, but today, yeah, um, you you know, like a year ago um, in January, you started at the meeting house, yeah, January third. And, and what a year it's been. What a year. Um, oh, yep. <laughs> and, and I would imagine for you, you're coming to our church in a, a really interesting time. Mm-hmm. And as in, in anything that you've done for as long as I've known you, you flourish in, you. In, in, in the midst of it all. But what's been for you a ministry highlight for you over the course of the year? Yeah, I don't want to make this sound like a cop-out answer, but it's meeting everyone. Um, I have the, the beautiful challenge that has been this year has been all the lovely friendships that have happened, the beautiful conversations in the midst of hard conversations that have happened. I hang out with the early years. So it's just like laughter and love in that space um, because they don't understand what's going on. Um, And so being able to kind of step away every Sunday and just like love on families in such a beautiful way and, and, um, 
Yeah, like just laughter, like straight out fun laughter of kids running and screaming down the hallway (laughs) and uh, just creating those spaces for them. And then over the course of the summer, I shifted a tiny bit into youth ministry, into junior highs, which are also just crazy and loud and fun. Um, And so like a couple weeks ago, we did our junior high retreat. And again, just like laughter in the midst of heaviness that has been this year, laughter has happened and joy has been found. Um, And it's just, I think, helped me personally just have a bit of perspective of like, this isn't the end of the world, Mm. even though it feels like the end of the world some days. Um, But God is still moving so much amongst this church and in this family. So Mm. it's been so lovely. Yeah. And Lisa, Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, you were in one rule. In the summertime, you went on a ministry sabbatical, you went to Savile Beach, went pastored up there, and then you came back, and yeah. now you're in a different role. You're pastoring in downtown Toronto. It's been a lot of movement for you, mover and shaker you are. <laughs> um, in the midst of that, three different spaces, three different mm-hmm. groups of people, three different ways of doing ministry. What have been some ministry highlights for you? Surprise, I am still here. I know that's like when I preached the other week for the live stream uh, earlier was this fall, it was like, oh, you're still here. I'm like, yeah, I'm You should have played the guest card. You should have played the guest card. Actually, I'm a ministry guest here. Yeah, still here. Um, oh, that, I mean, similar to what Haley just said, that it's like, if you just pay attention, God is doing mm. something in the group of people that you're with or in the town that you're in. Um, Sable Beach was like the pause that I know I needed. Um to be in a good place, whether or not I returned to this, to working at the meeting house. And um, God is just really gracious in that, like still serving as a pastor over the summer was the space for me that I needed um, in order to just remember his bigness of all the things. Like there are good things happening. He is um, active in our lives in hardship and active in our communities in hardship. And there's lots of beautiful things happening through people who just really love Jesus and want to see him glorified in their own lives and in their communities. So, I mean, like Savile Beach is a great place to spend the summer, (laughs) FYI. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but yeah, like there's just lots of good things happening. I was in Oakville, now in downtown Toronto. It's a smaller community than it was before, but there's beautiful things happening with the core of the folks that are there. So there's a theme of beautiful things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tammy, Matt, I want to give you an opportunity. What, what are some beautiful things in, in, from the seats that you sit in that you've been able to see or even experience yourselves over the course of the year? I want to hear what Tammy has to say. <laughs> nice. Lovely. <laughs> I think for me working in operations and just all the changes we've had to make, having to, to just um, adapt and learn to equip the church as it's been changing, as it's been moving into a regional model. It's been exciting and challenging to be able to go to different locations to see how they are moving out of the theaters into different buildings. Tammy saved my life. She (laughs) saved downtown Toronto's life at the end of September. Without her, we would have been like, what do we still need? But she like shrank everything down from like big bins into like every like four bins became one. So it's like you saved yeah. our life. <laughs> it's been, and that's that's the part that I think I like. I love going to places and being like, "Oh, this is what we can offer you. This is how we can help mm-hmm. you and support mm-hmm. you," and being invited in and being like, "Yes, like we have gifts that we can do, and we have ways we can resource you." So that's been exciting this year and challenging. Mm-hmm. That's the body at work right yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I would say for me, a couple of things personally. I think, hey, I mean, we're still coming out of COVID, right? Mm-hmm. Remembering that. Um, it's been a cool year to be able to reconnect with people relationally in a church context and meet some new faces at the same time, Mm -hmm. people that are joining our community. And in a way, I feel like that's provided a bit of a relational backdrop and fabric for all the things we've gone through is the ability to now reconnect and be in relationship with each other in person a little bit more. Um, But from a ministry perspective, Carmen and I have had the opportunity to travel to some of our different communities over the fall and just connecting with people being face-to-face with people, having time to heal, to listen to one another, to actually slow down and process with one another and to do a little bit of dreaming and hoping for the future Mm -hmm. as well. That's definitely a highlight for me from this past year. So I'm gonna turn back to you if that's okay. Because I want to ask you about... Do I have a choice? You, you, kind, of, you kind of don't, because I'm looking at you. I'm a good team player. Let's do it. Once right. you're making eye contact, it's kind of like, well, I guess the question's coming so my way. I have to answer the question. Um, you know, you, you, you sit in a really important seat right now. Uh, uh, interim senior director of our church, kind of helping us figure out this, this gray middle of 
transition of what's next, what's to come. What are some things that you've learned about yourself, about the body of Christ, about, about Jesus himself that's kind of helped you through the course of the year? Yeah, a lot of things. One of the things I've learned is just the importance of listening to one another and validating each other's experiences. Mm -hmm. Like really actually doing that, empathetically entering into your past, mm -hmm. your personality, your perspective on things, which is gonna be different than mine. And I can see that as a threat. I can see that as something that creates distance between us, or I can see it as a learning opportunity and an opportunity to build connection with one another, even in our differences. And I think that's a really powerful and important part of the discipleship process is us not necessarily seeking to dilute or sweep our differences under the rug, but walking on a journey together towards yeah. Jesus, learning from each other along the way and validating each other's experiences, like I said, authentically in that process. And I'm realizing that we, including myself, all of us, we need, we need practice at that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We need equipping. It's rare to really be able to do that, to enter into someone's experience who sees things and has experienced things differently than you, especially when hurt is involved but to be committed to walking toward Jesus together and allowing him through the Holy Spirit to transform us, to heal us, to move us forward. I'm just learning and have a fresh appreciation for the importance of that. And that gives me hope that there's a big opportunity for us to grow more practiced in the way of Jesus in working together to build unity and walk towards him even in our differences. And Tammy, you, you have, so you have one person who is in front of, of everything and then you're kind of like, I'm good. It's kind of sitting back. It's kind of chilling. <laughs> it's kind of like waving quietly. Like, but you, you're, the role you play, Lisa just described it, is, is so mm -hmm. valuable and, and so important. So mm -hmm. I ask you the same question. Like, what are some things that you've learned about, about yourself, about the church, about Jesus that has mm -hmm. kind of shaped how you've walked through the year? I think this year, the, something that I've been challenged about is, is speaking up. I have... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I certainly have been challenged more and more. And even like in like, like in relation with you, Matt, and with the leadership team and just when God has laid something on my heart and, hmm. you know, in the past, it's just like, no, no, like <laughs> someone else will speak up. Somebody else will say something. And so I've been challenged to be like, no, like this is on my heart for a reason. And and it's been good to speak up and it's been good to be able to work through it. You know, it doesn't mean I am right but it, it's good to be able to voice it and then walk through it and get context and understand it mm -hmm. and hopefully learn and grow. So that's been a huge, mm. huge challenge this year. And it's been, it's been good. It's been, it's been really good. And it's, it's scary. It's scary, oh. but it's good. Keep doing it. Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're blessed by it. We're yeah. blessed by mm -hmm. it. And, and Haley, Lisa, you want to add some, some quick learnings that you've been able to experience over the year? If you had to narrow it down to one or two? Yeah. I will say yes to many things in the hopes that something will stick. Mm. <laughs> Both between like me being like, ooh, I like this, and there being traction or fruit, mm. something growing from it. But then inevitably what happens is I'm like, ah, I've said yes to too many things and mm. now I feel frantic. So I've been reminded a lot this summer or this year, sorry. And in the summer was a big point of that this year that God's just, reminding me like my life is better and I'm a better human pastor, sister, friend when I have margin. Hmm. So instead of saying yes to a bunch of things, being quite uh, deliberate about the stuff I'm saying yes and then no to as well. And I think I'm a better whole person when those things happen. Hmm. Yeah. That's lovely. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of like Tammy. It's been a year of healing for me um, and growth and uh, knowing I have a voice and I, this is a safe space to be able to use my voice um, in various aspects. So mm, cool. I could dive into that one and that will take a long time, but I'm not going to. <laughs> well, well, I love, you know, you mentioned healing. Mm -hmm. And I go back to Psalm 23 that Tammy mentioned earlier, he restores our soul. Yeah. He leads us by still waters. And this mm -hmm. idea of like, I think we've all needed that over the course of this year, mm -hmm. that moment where God kind of says, just take a beat. Mm -hmm. Just take a breath, and mm -hmm. we are we are a moving people just by by nature. Just like we gotta get things done, and especially even more so when it feels like things not necessarily are falling apart, but you're kind of holding multiple things mm -hmm. together. You're like, we need to get things done. And for God's sake, like as you're walking into the unknown, take a beat, 
be made whole, be healed. But is is there something beautiful there? So I'm so happy that even though you brought it up a, a small a, yeah. a, a smidge, <laughs> smidge that that it was brought up because it's a good reminder to us that we the the the, the importance of margin, mm -hmm. the the importance of being together and finding healing in one another and listening mm -hmm. to one mm -hmm. another. And then in light of being listened to, being able to step out in faith and go like, because I'm listened to, I can feel the confidence to kind of go, I have an idea. <laughs> and know there's safety in, yeah. in, in this space to be able to say, yeah, we, we, we might not necessarily agree, but we're happy mm -hmm. that you said something. Or, you know, we do agree and we can add this. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a real, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. You're welcome. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm just thankful for the faithfulness of God that he reminded and reminds us to pause mm -hmm. a bit. And that pause is not a bad thing. A pause is actually yeah. better because it allows us to really focus on the things that we're supposed to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. we could use more of that. Yeah. Well, you know, we have, we have 365 <laughs> days to pause. Yeah, we another year. We've got another year to go. <laughs> <laughs> so in light of that, we have a... Um, we have a new year that that is dawned upon us, and you know we have 365 days. We have, this is not a leap year, year is, is it? No. No. That's a Google question. That's a good question. That's a major <laughs> Google question. 2023 is not divisible by four, so I don't think it's. There we go. Year. There you go. There you is that go. how it works? Let's talk off. <laughs> That's a Google answer. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Right? Okay. Um, so, so in, in light of that, I, I, I don't, obviously, I would just ask Matt. I was asking Matt if I didn't have Google. Um, what would be a, a prayer that you'd have for, for the next year? Matt, I'm going to start with, with you in, in, in your seat of, of leadership and, and influence for, for us as, as, a, as a church body. What would be a prayer that you would have um, for, for yourself and for the church moving forward as we go into the year? Yeah, you know, what's interesting is roughly every 500 years or so since Christ was on the earth, the church has experienced significant change or reformation, mm -hmm. almost like clockwork mm -hmm. over the past 2000 years. And I feel like even before COVID, we were already starting to experience the next great reformation in the church. And COVID just had a way of accelerating and exposing what was already happening. Mm -hmm. And bringing to light some of the deficiencies of the way we, the global church, um, including us as a church, some of the ways we've been, we've been doing things. Um, and it really was a wake up call for us. And even beyond COVID, I think it's clear if we're paying attention, God's saying things to and through the church to the world. And some of them are hard and they're difficult truths, but they're always good when God's saying them. And they always bring good things if we're paying attention and we're faithful. And I feel like we're in one of those once every 500 year moments. I really do. And it doesn't happen overnight, but it's hard when you think about the amount of change we're experiencing, not just as individuals, but as a church, as a global church, but there's so much hope in that. Mm -hmm. I really feel that. Mm -hmm. I think that we're at a point in time, we're gifted to live in an era where God is unlocking new possibilities mm -hmm. about what could happen next with his church. And we have the privilege and opportunity of being part of that story. So my prayer really is that the broader church, but also us at the meeting house, that we would catch fresh imagination for what this beautiful, mm. messy thing mm. called the church can be and how it brings hope to the world. Like, what does it look like to have a clean slate, which can be intimidating, but that's inspiring. And that's an mm. opportunity to say, hey, Jesus, where are you taking us? Yeah. What new thing are you doing? with all of our pain and baggage along for the ride, right? But what's a fresh imagination we can catch for what the church can look like now and in the future? That would be my prayer for us. Hmm. Yeah. Friends, anything you want to add in there? Like what's a, what's a prayer that you'd have for, for this upcoming year yeah. for, for the church? We spent time as pastors in December, actually our whole staff team in December, like going through a process of like grieving and mm -hmm. celebrating and sharing hopes with each other. And mine would be what I shared that day with our staff team that we would be able to recognize what from old or what was the meeting house and this church that is still beautiful to hold on to and letting go of some things that aren't helpful um, while being super courageous mm. mm -hmm. to go into what's new. And I say courageous because that is, I think, the tricky part about balancing the both is we want to uh, honor and mm -hmm. celebrate mm -hmm. and sometimes cling to the past. <laughs> and so it takes courage to say, hey, what's new? Let's jump into that. So that's my prayer for our church. And I think for just like me personally too. Yeah. I, I think um, my prayer would just be that 
we would follow Jesus no matter what, Amen. no matter what he asked us to do, knowing that it can be hard, but it's still, it's so much better. It's so much mm. better mm. to be with him and follow him. And I'd also, my other prayer is just for healing and for mm. joy. Yeah. I think he wants to give us both of those things and that can only happen if we, we follow him no matter what. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's good. Um, I think we need to be courageously bold to dream nice. and to heal. <laughs> like I yeah. know that sounds like I'm just summing it up, but that's really what's on my Man. heart that we are able to do all of mm. those things as a church, knowing we'll get it wrong, but knowing we have that grace from the Lord to keep moving forward and that he sees the bigger picture mm. in all of this. And so we just need to be courageous and trust him and dream and knowing that those dreams are from him and that we have those things um, to, to look forward to and to keep moving forward in our, in our context at the meeting house, but also as a broader church. I agree with you, Matt. I think he's doing something far more than we can ever imagine or dream of. And so we need to just, um, yeah, faithfully keep moving forward and, uh, and knowing that he has us, he has us exactly where we need to be in the midst of all of the hard and that he has this year. We're all, we're, I mean, it's not even January 1st and we're like, what's, what is going to happen it in the next January? Six. Sorry. It is. And it isn't. Sorry. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but knowing those 365, yeah. whatever, if it is a leap year, if it's not a leap year, <laughs> he knows everything that's going to happen this yeah. year. And so we can just be courageous and keep mm -hmm. walking forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, Matt, you mentioned the idea of, of reformation and I'm, I'm somebody who's on Twitter a lot and you're able to see these discourses of men and women who are um, dealing with the, the deconstruction of faith in real time, who are dealing with the politicizing of faith in real time, the, the constant, the regular arguments about this and that in ministry, who's allowed, who's not allowed, it's, but very loudly on Twitter. And the other thing you're able to see is there is an awakening that is taking place a desire to experience the spirits move in mm -hmm. a real way that doesn't necessarily benefit one sort of person or one sort of denomination or one sort of church, but benefits the kingdom and benefits those who would call themselves sons and daughters of the most high. And there's a beautiful, I love that picture of what, 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 what the reforming does is it allows us to have a better sense of the spirit. That's right. And so may that take place in our lives. Mm -hmm. May that take place that, we have a brand new awakening to the, to, the, to the Spirit's call in and around us that we're able to say, oh, He is active and doing things mm -hmm. in our midst and doing things through us and doing things in us and yeah. doing things around us that we may in turn invite people into this great story. It's like one of my favorite, like, it's a gr this grand narrative that we get to be a part of, that's right. right? Like that's what we're awakened for, not to add to a church or add to a denomination or add to whatever, but to, to, to see men and women that have a better understanding of who Jesus is, mm -hmm. which is really exciting mm -hmm. yeah. to really think about that. We, and we have a whole year to work on it because <laughs> today is January 1st. Yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, last, last statement. And then, um, uh, and then we're, 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 we're done here, not in your life, but just in this, 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 this state. If you're going to it, finish the sentence, 2023 will be, a year of, what would that, what would that be? If we were to finish that sentence. Uh, a year of healing. I was going to say healing. So I'll <laughs> add, well, and healing and, and new beginnings. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say change 2023 will be a year of change. I was going to say healing as well. Sorry, guys. Um, but <laughs> we need the source. That's what we need. Um, reconciliation. Yeah. I think it will also be your, uh, yeah. Something smart. If you are watching this online live, put your word in the chat. <laughs> Whether you're on our Discord server or our YouTube chat, like put what, what would be your 2023 word or prayer? Like put that in there so you can have people amen and yeah, encourage yeah. you in that. Like put, put that in there. Um, I think for, for me, 2023 will be a year of family. I know that sounds like like a, a play on the Fast and Furious movies, but I really I really do mean that, you know. Um, insert theme song. Insert yeah. theme song right <laughs> here, right? <laughs> Family. Uh, but the the idea of of being together and going back to something that Matt said earlier, 
the idea of like sitting with people and actually listening and there's healing that comes from actually listening and not listening to respond, but listening to understand. Mm. And you, you find that you have acquaintances that you listen to. You have friends who you learn from family that you learn from and the ability to be family together, to actually listen to one another and go, Oh, I understand. I, I see why that hurt or I see why that brings you joy. I see why that's something exciting mm-hmm. for you. And then how can I help you see that come to pass? Like that's my, my hope, right? That we, and you know, it sounds so you no know, kitschy, but like that we, that we as a, as a church body understand the value of family. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully mm-hmm. that takes place over, over the, the year that we get to, to do and live in uh, together. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's our conversation, friends. As, what were some questions that we should have said? What were some questions that I should have asked that a year from now, um, when my beard is grayer, um, we could do this whole panel again? Because I know that Tammy's so excited about <laughs> being on off. camera. She's already <laughs> marked it off marked for it next year. For next year. She's already ready for it. <laughs> but we, we thank you so much for, for journeying with us over the last year. It has not been an, an easy year. But even in the, the non-easy, God has been faithful. Mm-hmm. He's been present. He's been with us. And we've been able to see that together. We've been able to sing together and learn together and do life together. And we look forward to doing that even more so with you over the, the, the course of the next year. So whether you're joining us online or joining us in person, we look forward to seeing you next week. And to, from all of us to all of you, Happy New Year Happy from New Year. Meeting House. We'll see you. Peace out.